Welcome back to another episode of Plant-Based Dads. I'm Joey. We are a vegan, mostly whole foods cooking channel. We do some product reviews. Sometimes there's some episodes with Tim. If you like what you hear so far, please hit that like button, show us some love, and think about subscribing and becoming part of the Plant-Based Dads family. We do have a Patreon page set up. Our patrons are our monthly financial supporters that help us put the show together and get the plant-based message out to the masses. If you've ever seen the show and thought, how can I help? How can I be part of this? Or if you're in the YouTube group, which is like 10,000 members strong, and you've thought, how can I help? How can I be part of this? That's how you can help. You can become a patron. There's also a link below down to PayPal where you can make a one-time donation if you're more comfortable with that. It's January 3rd. It's the day that our January Starch Solution Challenge starts. So... Uh, I am all in it. This is my year. I'm going to become so skinny that Hi Harp Hannah is going to look at me and cry because she's jealous. That's how skinny I'm going to be. By the way, HCH, call me. All right, so 2002 brings a lot of challenges for me because I've got a lot going on this year, including my full-time job as a uh, sixth grade math teacher. So if you're doing the challenge with us, you've got this, I've got this, we've all got this. I'm going to kick it off today with a new recipe. You know, I don't usually make black-eyed peas. I didn't grow up with them. Uh, I grew up in New York, right? So not a lot of black-eyed peas. Uh, and then anytime, anytime I visited the South or even in Texas or wherever, um, and I had them, I absolutely loved them. But I, I never really think about them for recipes. So lately I've been kind of toying around with black-eyed peas. I'm really loving the variety that black-eyed peas brings to my weekly menu. All right, this is an amazing recipe. It uses simple ingredients. I can't wait to show you how it looks. Let's get to the food. For the curry today, we're starting out with a medium sized stock pot. I've got this set to medium heat. I'm gonna add a little bit of water here for water saute. I'm not using oil, so I may need to add more later on. Once the water is hot, I'm gonna add one half a teaspoon of cumin seeds. And I'm just gonna mix them up a little bit here to get them all wet. I'm going to bring them to a sputter and let them do that for about 60 seconds. And once I can see that they're doing their thing, I can start adding my aromatics. Here I'm using two small diced onions. If you have red onions, use those, but I didn't have red onions, so I'm using the white ones. Next, I've got six cloves of garlic and I push it through one of those garlic press things. Now I've got about a thumb size of ginger here that I've grated on the microplaner. And I'm just going to kind of mix all this up to get it incorporated moving those seeds around and get them up to the top and get the aromatics to the bottom. And then I'm also gonna add about a tablespoon of water just to keep it sauteing and not burn. Onions will stick to the bottom if you're not careful. I'm gonna let this saute here for about five minutes until the onions get translucent or if you're using the red onions until they kind of get brown. But everything should be nice and soft, as you can see right here. Next, I'm ready for my spices. I'm using a half a teaspoon of Indian chili powder, about a quarter of a teaspoon of turmeric, and about two teaspoons of coriander powder. I've also got a quarter teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna dump those right into the pot, and then I'm gonna grab my spoon and just start mixing it up. I wanna get all of the spices in there incorporated so they can start activating with the heat. I'm gonna saute this for about two minutes, stirring occasionally. I'm gonna keep scraping the bottom to make sure nothing's sticking. If you need to add a little bit more water here, then do a tablespoon at a time. Next, I'm adding two vine-ripe diced tomatoes. And I've got a marbleized chili pepper right out of my garden that I'm putting in here. I love the color of these things and it really gives it a nice little flavor here. And I'm gonna use my spoon here just to mix all that up. I wanna get it all incorporated. And I added just a little bit more water here so it didn't burn. And I'm gonna let that cook with the cover on for about four to five minutes. I want all those flavors to come together. After about five minutes, I'm gonna take off the cover, give it a nice little stir here. You can see it's all looking good. I'm gonna keep scraping the bottom and I'm gonna let it cook again without the cover on for about four more minutes. Next, I've got this tube tomato paste here. I'm just gonna squeeze in about two teaspoons. Then I'm gonna use my wooden spoon to mix this up. I changed to a wooden spoon because it's much better at scraping the bottom of the pan. And I'm gonna let that saute for about two minutes to get all the flavors combined. Then it's time for the star of the show. I'm adding in two cans of black-eyed peas, drained and rinsed. Then I'm gonna use my wooden spoon and try and get all this incorporated and mixed together. You can see the onions have taken on the colors of the spices. It almost looks like a squash. I'm gonna let this cook for about four minutes. I want the beans to kind of absorb some of that flavoring in there. But canned beans are pre-cooked. Then I'm gonna add about half a cup of vegetable stock. I don't wanna put too much stock in here because I don't want this to be watery. Now I'm mixing this all up with my wooden spoon to get the broth combined. Then I'm gonna put the cover on here and let it cook for about five to seven minutes. After the five to seven minutes is up, I'm gonna take the cover off 
And I'm gonna grab my uh, wooden spoon here and give it another stir. Again, I'm still scraping the bottom. I don't want anything to stick. And you can see here the liquid's starting to reduce. We're starting to see a, a much uh, more thicker curry. Now I'm adding in a cup of chopped spinach. I kind of packed it in there because I like a lot of spinach in my curries. And I'm just gonna incorporate this in. I'm gonna use my wooden spoon to kind of mix it around. And I want it all to wilt and, and get cooked in there. And you can see the wilting's happening very fast. Now I'm gonna put the cover back on and I'm gonna let this cook for about five to seven minutes again. Once the five to seven minutes is done, I'm gonna take the cover off and you can see it's looking really good. It's thickening up. The spinach is all wilted. The beans look amazing. I mean, this, this looks really good, but wait, there's more. Next, it's about an eighth of a teaspoon of garam masala. I'm just using this one right here. Now I'm adding about a tablespoon of fresh lemon juice here. Then I'm adding about a quarter of a cup of freshly chopped cilantro. I love the flavor of cilantro. It's really fresh in soups and stews. Unless of course you don't like cilantro and in that case you might wanna leave it out. Now I'm shutting the heat off and just kind of mixing it all up and giving it its final stir here. I'm gonna grab my spoon and taste this and see if I need any more seasoning. Look at that, it's absolutely beautiful. And as it turns out, it's good. All right, this is how thick this should be, right? It, we, we did throw broth in, but look, it's still got its thickness. It's really sitting on the spoon nice and see how it kind of falls off the spoon, but it doesn't pour off the spoon. This is perfectly cooked. Let's plate this baby up. All right, so I've got a nice little bowl here and throwing in some white rice because I love beans and rice together. And then I'm just gonna spoon out some of my curry here. I'm gonna cover the whole top of that rice with this curry. And then when I put the cilantro in, I didn't get all of it in. There was like four little leaves left before that didn't go into the pot. So I'm just sprinkling them on top here. And because I can't eat anything without pepper on it, I'm uh, sprinkling some fresh ground pepper on here. Now look at that, folks. There it is. It's perfect. A beautiful plate of curried black-eyed peas. I can't wait to dig into this. Let's eat. And now we have a beautiful bowl of curried black-eyed peas. I did put it with rice. Um, so if you're doing the Such Listen Challenge, you want this to be part of your, uh, your meal. So you would have the beans and the rice here as you know, your 70 part of your plate or your 50 part of your plate or whatever part the starch is gonna be. And then you'd still want a non-starchy vegetable. But just for the sake of the time of the show, I'm just showing you the starchy part here. You'll wanna pair it with your own non-starchy vegetable. All right, I'm gonna give this a taste. I know it's really good. I've been eating it all week, uh, but let's give it a shot here. Mmm. A beautifully tasting, rich, Indian inspired dish. I love Indian food, and this is a big reason why. The gada masala and the coriander and the, the, the seeds and all that stuff in there, the chili powder, like, it just reminds me of being in an Indian restaurant, and the food is always so robust and so tasty. Absolutely delicious. Mmm. This is a very flavorful dish, and it just goes so well over the rice, like every other bean dish. All right, folks, that's our show for today. An amazing Indian-inspired curried black-eyed peas. You gotta love it. Sometime this week, I will be picking the winner for the knife giveaway, so I'll let you guys know that, uh, probably on Instagram or in, in Facebook. And keep an eye out for uh, the progress and the challenge. I'm expecting you to be all in, because I can't do this myself, and I need to do this. So we're in this together. All right, hit that like button, show us some love. What's not to like? If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button, become part of the Plant-Based Dads family. You'll get notified every time we have a new video usually every Monday. And leave a comment below. You make an Indian food? I absolutely love it. Uh, I love, I guess I love all, all foods, but Indian right up there with probably my top five. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.